as good an outing, but they're here in this gold medal match. Yeah, they're, well, I mean, they're the undisputed uh, best in the world for as far as I know. So um, it's going to be interesting to see if China can uh, live up to uh, the expectation of beating them today in this match. Time to go for gold here for the first time on Recurve Sunday. The Recurve women's team gold medal match is a matchup between Korea and China. Let's go down to the shooting line to meet the teams. Representing the Republic of Korea. En la faca número uno, representando República de Corea. Ang San. Kang Chi Yong. Im Chi Hoon. Representing the People's Republic of China. In the faca number two, representing Republic Popular of China. Li Jiaman. Wu Jiaxin. Yang Shaolu. For this matchup is La Juez del Partido Fatima Abuyarrade. Well, what a lineup we've got here. Korea, arguably the favorites. An San, Kang Cha Young, and Lim Si Hyun. Their trio. Looking good and ready to go. Going up against the Chinese team, boasting two Olympians in Wu Jiejin and Yang Xiaolei. They're teamed up with Li Jiaman. They've got to get off to a good start against the Koreans. It's always the case that a Korea get off to a good start. It's very difficult to chase them down. And San will shoot first for Korea in this gold medal match. Yeah, An San already has an imprint of her string on her face, and this is because obviously she has been on the practice range already shooting. Um, and these first arrows are key to figure out, OK, is my sight setting going to have to change, or can I just uh, leave it where it is? So. Um, these first arrows in the match are always very important to see if you can get some kind of idea of the, the finals venue. Yeah, worth mentioning right at the top as well, Chef, that uh, they're putting Lim, the sort of newbie to the team, in uh, the third spot here. Yeah, she has already proved her worth, though, in the team uh, when winning the uh, previous stage in Shanghai. So it's not like she doesn't know what she's doing at all. So all to the left and a little bit of uh, tinkering with the sight. Yeah, and China can use this information. They can look at the Korean team shooting those three arrows on the left and Seven. think, oh, we can adjust our sights to the left a little bit. Um, they might have already. Um, and what's difficult to judge is also, did uh, the Korean team already move their sight from the practice range to the finals venue? So it's, it's a bit of a gamble, but they could definitely use the information they got from looking at Korea. Well, Lee starting with a seven, Wu following it up with a nine, dialing into the middle. This is Yang, the youngest member of the Chinese team at 22 years old. Nine, Ruby. So we are yet to see a 10 in this uh, gold medal match, but Korea had a really good group, so that means that I think they're going to uh, adjust really quickly and uh, get some tens in after this. So it's interesting to see always in a team match the um, 
communication and like the dynamic in the team and you can see that there is a bit of a um, like discussion going on about where to aim and uh, what the effect on the arrows is uh, coming from the finals or from the practice venue to here. Nothing in the middle yet. And 53 is a gettable target for the Chinese team. And you'll notice that uh, Yang is shooting arrows three and four. So she's been protected in the middle of the order by the more experienced Wu, shooting two and five. Nine, moving. Yeah, so that nine means that they cannot get any set points in this set anymore, um, but they can still use this arrow to gather some information about where the, where it's going to hit, uh, if it's going to be affected by any potential wind or light circumstances. Eight. Uh, and you can see a lot of arrows on the left, so I think the teams that are going to be shooting later uh, will have somebody in the stands uh, having a little bit of a peek here. It's interesting, isn't it, because um, that we, we are used to seeing an incredibly high level from these two teams. No one's hit a 10 just yet, and the conditions looking pretty good yeah although you can see that they are discussing like it seems like something is uh, is going on uh, on the field so it, it might be that there is a little bit of wind that comes over the stands uh, you can see the flags on the target wavering just that little bit um, so it might be that they're thinking uh, there's wind a couple meters up so it's not reaching the windsock but there is wind affecting the arrows Interesting also that uh, the lineups uh, was a sort of standard one, two, three from uh, Korea, An, Kang, and Lim shooting in that order through both rotations. And they kind of do a reversed order for China. They go Li, Wu, Yang in the first rotation, and then Yang, Wu, Li. Yeah, so you can have different approaches to this, uh, to this game, um, or to this sport, I should maybe say. Um, and uh, there's no one good approach like uh, it depends all on personal preference and just experience so if you have experience that you don't like starting an end or uh, closing an end for instance then you can just adapt to that and, and let somebody else do it element of protection for yang shooting arrows three and four perhaps yeah maybe although um the fourth arrow is often also a, a key arrow in a in a set because you can uh, put some pressure on the other team by and, and, and putting down a marker for um, your other two teammates. So, well, Korea leading 2 0 after the first set. And by virtue of trailing, it will be China to shoot first in set number two. I've just had a little bit of a look around the, the venue and um, the windsock is seemingly a little bit like blocked by the trees that are next to it um, so it's not in the best position to judge the wind from uh, but you can definitely see that there's some wind if you look at the trees uh, in the background so although we had a nice little shot of the, the windsock earlier where it was just hanging down as if there was no wind I think there's more to this match than me see I yeah, and of course shooting over 70 meters here so the wind conditions can change down the range as chef clearly no, pointing out no, no, uh, it really. looks certainly like the uh, chinese team at least have adapted to those conditions 29 out of a possible 30 through the first rotation Again, really interesting to see the, the way of communication uh, of the Korean team where uh, they get off the line and then immediately they come with uh, feedback on where their shot went off, um, where they expected the shot, uh, where it eventually ended up hitting, so what the next team member should be doing or could be doing. Um, a lot of communication, I think that's, that's a really important feature in a team match like this.
8, 8. Really good shooting there, and also after that first arrow, um, I think they knew that that arrow was going to go to the right because you could see the reaction. Seven. That's a bit of an unfortunate seven. Um, I think they they did really well with the fifth arrow, um, n not trying to adjust too much on an arrow of which they knew that was going to go to the right. No. So career in with a good shout here. China were on 37 after four arrows. Shot a 10 and a 7. No. So now even though that um, the, the Chinese team had a 29 to start with. Um, Korea now has a possibility to grab this set with just a nine. So just hitting the gold would be enough to get this set, and that's exactly what she does. So um, a 4-0 lead is a very commanding lead, especially in a team round where uh, four points um, is enough to get you a shoot off. So um, in team matches, you only need to get five set points to win the match. Um, so now all they need to do is just make sure they tie whatever uh, the opposing team is uh, shooting. Yeah, the tied score means the uh, teams will share the points. Korea have uh, taken the first two sets, and in fact that 55 they shot could get marked up to a 56 if the first arrow is advanced to a nine. It's just a tiny little bit of movement there at the end for Lee, wasn't there, before she released? Yeah, it seems like there was a little bit of loss of tension there um, while extending through the clicker. Uh, clicker obviously being the uh, little piece of metal that indicates your draw length, so you pull until uh, your arrow passes that little metal plate. Uh, it makes a click sound and then you know that you're consistent in your draw length. Um, if there is a bit of like a hesitation or loss of tension in your muscles, then often that will result in a bad release or um, like a bad uh, follow through with your front arm. So it's very important that you have a certain rhythm going and, and that you can um, finish your shots strong and, and have a strong follow through. What would happen to an arrow if the archer releases it before the tip comes through the clicker? Well, it, it happens um, t sometimes. Um, and typically for right-handed archer, it means that it will go low and right because the metal plate will push it to the right and it will also take energy out of the arrow. So it will go low and right. Um, especially in situations where you have very little time left, you can choose to not shoot it through the clicker because sometimes you struggle to get it through. Um, but then I, I would recommend uh, the archer in that situation to just aim left high um, and hope for the best. Um, you can also, when you know you're going to shoot it through the clicker, um, yank the bow up. Um, Bit of bow quando. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done that. <laughs> it's possible. Well, the favourites, Korea, leading 4-0 after two sets. Can do it in three. China will have to start this third set as they did the second the big score Nine. there's that bow quando that you were talking about so typically that means that at the moment of of the clicker going off so that that draw length indicator uh, your side pin is not in the middle so you need to adjust a bit in the shot itself um, it's a bit easier to do with a recurve bow than with a compound bow because the arrow is on the string for a bit longer um, and in recurve, the release is kind of like a motion. It's, it's a you're doing the shot yourself rather than having the release go off at a certain point uh, and the arrow just disappearing from your bow. So uh, you'll see a little more movement typically in the recurve division than in the compound division. China match the rotation 
from the second set. First of two with a 29. I think that's it. I don't want to call it definitively, but I think it's on the line. If it cuts the line, as archers say, you get the higher score. So a provisional 28 for the Korean team. Chef thinks the nine will get marked up to a 10, so got to work on the basis, certainly for China, that uh, Korea are on 29, and an eight is a replication of what Yang did in the second set with that uh, fourth arrow. It was a really good angle to see why that arrow went low to the eight, because there was a bit of like a, a stumble um, at the moment of release, so th some people would call it releasing forwards. Um, and it's more so just not keeping tension in your, uh, like not keeping back tension uh, and not letting the fingers relax through the release, but rather opening your fingers. Um, she tried to hide it a little bit, or the, I think it's more like a, trying to save it, but uh, there was definitely some forward motion there or no backwards motion in the release. Resulting in a very difficult situation for China. Yeah, 54 is a very gettable target for Korea possible 58 perhaps even 59 on the cards for them no, three nines is going to be enough So as the scorer implies, only a seven is needed to win this match, and we've not seen them shoot outside of the eight ring so far. Well, what a way to finish, a couple of tens for a 57 provision. It could get marked up to a 58, and it does mean a guaranteed 6-0 win, and yet another recurve gold medal for Korea. Yeah, and it's almost like, um, people are expecting them to win so it's almost as if they find it less impressive that they win again but I feel like it's just it's increasingly impressive how often they j just show up and get the gold medal uh, and, and they get to take the gold medal home that shakes all around and uh, perhaps a little story of the day starting to build for Lim Si Hyun in the middle there of the Korean trio uh, she's got a hundred percent record in the individual competition uh, this is only her second World Cup and she's on a run here for potentially a hat-trick of gold medals completed task number one confirmation from the target judge Korea taking gold in the Rico women's team event here in Medellin and can Lim Si Hyun complete the hat-trick?